Welcome to Debaco University. Here we're going to be looking at animal hair descriptive characteristics and some of the distinguishing factors uh, that we look at when we're looking at hair, particularly at the microscopic level. So starting with why is animal hair in general important? Well, if evidence shows animal hair present, it can generate questions, such as if the victim does not own a dog, it could um, interfere uh, with suspect owns a dog or has come in contact with a dog. Also, uh, DNA can be removed from animal's mouth if bitten, and blood samples can be removed from animal's fur, feet, or etc. So when we're looking at why is animal hair important, even in forensics investigation, uh, identifying animal hair can be uh, very important. There's different types of animal hair, so keep in mind when we're looking at comparison different hair types on animals, we are often looking at guard uh, hairs, which are thicker, longer, straight, and form the outer protective coat of an animal. The fur or wool hairs are thinner, um, often soft, kinked, and not straight, and found close to the skin, forming an insulating inner coat to the animal. And we have tactile hairs, which provide sensory functions and typically found at the head of animals, such as the whiskers. We just kind of see this quick comparison here um, of here's, here's the dog, here's the guard hair, and here's the under fur hair. You can just see from the same dog the stark difference in those animal hair types just on quick visual inspection, both at 400 um, times magnification. Now the cuticle scale pattern is another area we want to be looking at. Uh, we have the imbricate scales that are random overlapping patterns, much like roof tiles, and are often flattened. So here's that example here of the imbricate uh, kind of scale pattern that we see. Then we have the spinous, which are scales that have a spiny, long and pointed appearance that overlap, and you can definitely see that here in the mink hair. Then we have the coronal, which are crown-like scale pattern, which is very fine hairs. It looks like a stack of paper cups, uh, common in small rodents, bats, and is very rare in humans. So this is an example here of bat hair, and we can see clearly um, how it's very distinctive on a visual basis compared to the mink hair here, or just kind of the unidentified animal here with the imbricate scale pattern. So this is an important uh, method of being able to identify for at least classifying the hair in a particular species. Moving on to the cortex color, well, there's a wide range of natural colors and shadings uh, that do occur. Uh, we see a couple of them here. We have guard hairs of a black bear, a brown bear, and a polar bear. And just quick on that cortex color, that's the region right here. We can see the differences as well here in those colors and shadings. Then we have the medulla uh, description categories. So how are we kind of going through and describing the different medulla regions? Well, let's remember the medulla is the innermost layer of the hair and serves as kind of the marrow of the hair, that center portion. It's composed of air uh, filled components that are typically harder to see in human hair compared to other animals. Looking here at the coyote, the harbor seal and the raccoon, we can definitely see um, some major differences in how we classify the different medulla um, patterns that we notice. Now those patterns uh, specifically, uh, we're looking at they could be absent, they could be fragmented, they could be intermittent, or they could be continuous. And here's just one example of looking kind of from a far away um, microscopic view of the Fisher cat on how we definitely see a unique uh, medulla pattern here. There's different structures. So here's just that quick kind of uh, comparison of a Morris, um, a, 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 Morris, uh, a serial, multi serial, a cellular, or a lattice. So this amorphous kind of shape here, uh, then we get into the lattice, uh, the multi serial, the uniserial, very distinctive patterns. And now we're going to see some examples of those here. So, first off, starting with the amorphous shape. Um, it appears as a solid line but lacks a clear pattern or structure. And this is what we're noticing here. And looking at a Jersey cow's hair sample at 400, uh, I'm sorry, at 40 microns here, this is an example of this uh, amorphous shape. And if you're not familiar with a Jersey cow, uh, that's what one looks like there. The uni um, serial has one ladder row of components running down the hair longitudinally. And here's kind of what the general image looks like. And the example of that would be guinea pig hair. So we can see that uni uh, serial pattern here to the medulla. And there's a happy little guinea pig there looking at the camera. 
Then we have the multi serial here, and this is looking at an example of a rabbit hair would fall under this category. And this has multiple ladder rows components running down the hair again in that longitudinal direction. And we can see that evident here, keeping at the same magnification of four, uh, 40 microns here with a rabbit hair. Then we have the um, cellular where we're looking at a wide band of randomly shaped uh, cell-like structures and the silver fox would be an example here of this medulla pattern and looking at each one of these bars we're using 10 uh, micrometers here. Then this lattice structure. So this can occupy nearly the entire width of the hair with small circular shaped components. If you look really closely here at this deer hair sample, we definitely see that. Um, and again, there's filled as, there's partially filled. This would be considered filled of this uh, white tailed deer in the image here. Now we have something also called the medullary index, and this describes the thickness of the medulla layer. In humans, the value of the medullary index is usually about one third or less, and that of animal hair is typically um, one half or greater. And how we get that is looking at the diameter of the medulla compared to, to the diameter of the actual hair. So how do we go about that calculation? Uh, again, using a microscope that would ideally have um, a, some way of measuring that. The index, this medullary index is calculated by dividing the medullar width by the width of the entire cortex here. We'd write those two numbers down, we divide those two and we multiply um, by 100 here. And here's the medullary a diameter, here's the total width there, and we would simply divide those two to get this medullary index. And this can be important for identification, for classifying, and keep in mind this still always falls under that area of class evidence, not individual evidence, but still important to document and when we're looking at developing an understanding and comparison of different animal hairs as we saw in the images in this presentation.